Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about The Flash, Season 6, Episode 8. We're going to be talking about the mid-season finale, The Last Temptation of Barry Allen, Part 2. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so first off, I want to say thank you to everyone who has become a member by clicking the join button on the channel. That is a new thing. Please consider doing that if you want to support the channel, but also recently, I think it was yesterday, YouTube took away like 200 subscribers from me and they took it away from other YouTubers because it was like inactive accounts or something. I don't know if that's completely true. So what I need you guys to do is share this video around on Twitter, Instagram, social media, or share it to your real life friends. Be like, hey, you watch The Flash, you watch Supergirl, go watch this channel. So something like that would be really appreciated any way you can do it because we are so close to 100,000 subscribers and YouTube is just like, no, you're not getting there. So we are really close, can't wait for that. Anyway, so let's go ahead and talk about this episode. We're going to be doing my review and breakdown for the episode. So this is the mid-season finale and the ending of the episode leads right into Crisis. Crisis has begun and we'll get to that once we get to the end of the episode. But this episode overall was pretty good. I really did enjoy it. I don't think it's like as good as last episode, which was The Last Temptation of Barry Allen Part 1, which was very, very good. Definitely the best episode of the season. I think this is like pretty close up and definitely is one of the better episodes of the season. So yeah, let's go ahead and break this down. So at the start of the episode, we have obviously the aftermath of Barry being taken over as Dark Flash and you know, he knocks everyone. Iris is on the ground, Cisco's on the ground and so on. So Team Flash then debate how to stop Ramsey. And at the same time, we find out that Central City is beginning to be overrun with Bloodworks army. And so simultaneously, and I'm really sorry if you hear like a buzzing in the background, that is some builders doing some work and it's been going on for two days. So sorry, but anyway, let's get back on topic. So we have Cecile and Camilla. They have a decent chunk of the episode where we're cutting back and forth between the other action and them. They're stuck in a building. I don't remember what building. I think it's Iris's office. I can't really tell though, it's kind of dark. And so they're being attacked. They sort that out, you know, and they eventually get away by the end of the episode, but that's with the help of Team Flash neutralizing all these zombies around the city and getting them back to normal. At the same time, we have blood work with Dark Flash. They're sort of side by side a lot of this episode. And we have Nash Wells sort of continuing on from, you know, where we ended Supergirl's episode. But like just prior to that, because the end of this episode is the exact same ending as Supergirl's episode. So it's obviously in the past. And then, you know, the end of Supergirl is in the present once we get to the end of The Flash. So that's what's going on there, so you don't get confused. So whilst we're in the past, we're still with Nash Wells, and we have Manu Vo, who it's confirmed it's actually him. They didn't confirm that. I was like, hmm, is this the anti-monitor? Could it be? But no, it's actually the monitor talking to him via, like, his head, like, through his head. And he's like, bow down to me. Obviously being very godlike, because, you know, Nash Wells is trying to kill him. That's been his mission, to get rid of him. So obviously wants him to like bow down, you know, see him as a god like everyone else does. And so he, you know, kind of refuses. And so he sort of plays around with him. And you're thinking, oh, this is leading to where Supergirl ended, right? But actually, surprisingly, and this kind of scared me a little bit, he gets attacked by some of the zombies. So he fights them off throughout this episode. And at one point we have Iris visiting Barry and also Bloodwork. And this scene reminded me so much of when Henry Allen was with Zoom. As Dark Flash speeds up towards Iris and sort of like holds onto her, grabs onto her, threatening to phase his hand through her chest. It was an incredible scene. I really did like this. This was one of my favorite bits towards the start of the episode. And then we got Joe, Killer Frost, and Allegra. Joe's hurt. And this is all whilst the city's going crazy because it's been overrun by these zombies. They're attacking people under, obviously, the control of blood work. And he's trying to feed and cure the city, as he says. So you still got this Camilla and Cecile stuff trying to escape the building. That's continuing throughout the episode. And we have Ramsey shocked by Cisco. As Cisco comes out, he's trying to stop him, but then he stops him. I'm talking about blood work, stop Cisco, he's about to kill him. But then later in the episode, we find out that Barry has sort of got into his mind a little bit and he's able to control some of his actions. So then Ramsey goes on, you know, he's in control of Cisco, he's choking him, he doesn't end up killing him though. 
that's because of Barry, like we just talked about. But he's going to blow up Star Labs. He tells him his plans, and it's actually a little bit of Barry implementing his thoughts and some little messages for Iris and Cisco, which actually aids them in the end of the episode. But at first, it seems like he's just telling them his plan. You know, he's to drop some of his blood, or you know, whatever it's called, like the goo inside of the particle accelerator to spread it out throughout the city and everyone would be you know infected with his sort of disease and so we've got that going on then we got nash wells still fighting these zombies then we have barry who is revealed to actually still be inside dark flash and he's not just been completely taken over so team flash used that to their advantage considering they know that now you know barry's been sending these little messages and so then we have blood work and barry Dark Flash showing up at Star Labs and they come in, they let them in because, you know, they sort of trust Barry and this was, you know, what Barry's sort of been training them to do. And eventually they are able to stop Bloodworks attack, they stop him, but he actually escapes. And so Barry's turned back to normal because he's uninfected or like defected, I don't know what you call it. But that's due to Allegra using her powers on, you know, the particle accelerator, which is spinning around one of Ramsey's blood drops. And so basically he stopped for now and Bloodwork escapes and he full on goes comic book Bloodwork, which I thought was very cool. Obviously the CGI was a bit iffy, but I thought it was just a cool concept to actually see that on screen. Obviously it's not as cool as the comic book version, but like... It was pretty damn cool, if I'm honest, and it was kind of a little bit satisfying to see just him in a different form rather than just as a human. Because, yeah, he's a little bit threatening, but he's much more threatening as this sort of really screwed up creature slash monster that is full of red and sort of blood and, yeah, it, it does look pretty cool. And so Barry attempts to stop him. But then Barry is like stuck to this car and then suddenly out of nowhere Bloodwork aka Ramsey's mum actually shows up out of nowhere. You think it's real for a second but it turns out that Barry has got into his mind, into his head like obviously Bloodwork did to him last episode. And so essentially uses that to distract him and get him locked up in Star Labs. And so then he's trapped and he's defeated and so he's done. That's it, Bloodwork's done for now. And we're going to have a new villain in the back half. We really don't know who it is. Obviously, there's the teaser of Black Hole. But I'm thinking there's going to be, like, one singular villain eventually. And I'm really hoping for Red Death. I don't know about you guys, but it seems like a lot of you are as well. And then Barry says the line, Now it's time for our next fight. What's our next fight that is extremely imminent? That being Crisis. And so you have this Killer Frost talk with Caitlyn. They talk together. Caitlyn's back for now for, you know, the beginning part of Crisis. And then Killer Frost will take over, obviously, for the fighting, as we've seen in some of the trailers. But it's kind of nice to see that Caitlyn's going to be returning because, really, we haven't seen her since, like, the first few episodes of the season. And to be honest, I prefer Caitlyn. I really like Killer Frost, but Caitlyn's one of my favorite characters. So I'm a little bit happy that maybe we'll get to see a bit more next episode. In the crossover, obviously on Supergirl, Batwoman, and mainly The Flash because, you know, she's a main member in The Flash cast. And then we begin Barry's goodbyes because he's thinking, oh shit, this crisis is coming literally in like a few minutes or so, and I need to say my goodbyes. So that's what Barry does, and it's very sentimental, really affecting. I really liked this end of the episode. I thought it was really exciting, and it got me really, really hyped considering my note says crisis has begun in all capitals red fucking skies and then it goes it's all fucking happening four exclamation marks capitals that is my notes i thought i would say that because you know i was freaking out this is me just reacting straight off from the episode so wow what an ending to the episode and so we get like some little pieces of talk between all the characters iris talks about how she kind of likes time travel because she would revisit their first kiss over and over and i think that's very sweet and i really like that moment in the episode towards the end then we have you know a few really nice lines like our love story never ends they can't erase what's in our hearts. We have already beaten this crisis. And yeah, so that's where the episode ends. The skies turn red and crisis has begun. 
next week it's all happening I cannot wait so that's about it for this video guys I talked about the ending scene the post credit scene in my Supergirl review so go check that out yesterday it's exactly the same so I talked about that already so you can go check that out but anyway guys thank you guys so much for watching I'll catch you guys later goodbye I see red.